All right, finally, welcome to the very last part of section 1.1. We're still working with functions. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how they work. So let's, well, let's look at this, uh, what we're going to learn today. Um, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to find the domains of more complex functions using interval notation. And interval notation is from that was the very first uh, part of this uh, video series for section one that we learned how to do. So we're going to talk more about interval notation. And this is very important. Okay, for calc class. So when you get to calc, you're going to need to know how to do interval notation. <coughs> all right, so what is domain? Domain is the set of all input values. And remember, inputs are x's. So it's the set of all of our x values for which the function is defined. Okay, so now what, I mean, I, I always give you definitions, but sometimes, unless we really dig into them, we really don't know what that means. Okay, so what does that mean? All right, so let's say we have this equation. Let's say we have the equation x plus 2. All right, so this means what numbers can I plug in x plus 2 and actually get an answer as an output? If I plug in 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. If I plug in 6, I should get 8. What happens if I plug in, I don't know, let's say I plug in negative 2. What's negative 2 plus 2? I get 0. Okay, so I don't believe <coughs> there is any numbers that I can't plug in x plus 2 and get some sort of an output out. Let's just plug in negative 100. If I plug in negative 100 plus 2, I get negative 98. So that works as well. So if we notice here, if we look at the graph of x plus 2, this graph goes on forever in the left direction and it goes on forever in the right. So let's talk about domain. Domain is, are all, these are all my x values, okay? What x values don't work? Okay, that, uh, that value has something. 2 touches my graph. 0 touches my graph. Negative 1 touches my graph. If I go all the way out here to negative 9, and I go down, it will eventually touch my graph. And if you think about it, if I come out here to like positive 13, eventually this line, this line is going to come and it's going to intersect because this goes on forever and ever. So for x plus 2, there isn't a single x value on this x-axis that will not touch that graph somewhere because this graph goes on forever left and forever to the right. So in interval notation, how would we write that? It goes from negative infinity to the left all the way to positive infinity to the right. Okay, so that goes on forever in both directions. That's what that means. <coughs> all right, let's look, at the, let's look at the next one. Let me get rid of this first. All right, so let's look at let's look at the next function that we're looking at here. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing. I'm still I'm still a little sick. All right, so my new function is square root of x. What happens if I plug in four? I should get square root of four is two. What happens if I plug in sixteen? Square root of sixteen is four. However, what happens if I plug in negative four? Okay, what is the square root of negative four? Well, that is 2i. That's not something that I can get. So sometimes, we, if we plug in negative numbers here, that's not going to work. So some functions are a little different. Can I plug in 0? Okay, let's think about that. Can I plug in 0 here? Get rid of all of this. What happens if I plug in 0 into my function? 0. What is the square root of 0? Well, that's just 0. 0 times 0. So 0 works. But anything smaller than 0, so anytime it's a square root, you can't do anything smaller than 0 because you can't take the square root of a negative. So what would be the domain for this graph? Okay, it starts here, and it goes on forever in the positive x direction. So how would we write that? Well, I can plug in 0, so 0 is included. However, it goes to the positive infinity, and it never ends. Okay, so it includes 0. That's why I put a bracket, not a parenthesis and it goes on forever in the positive infinity direction. Okay, so that gives you a general idea of what we're gonna do with this, with these interval notations, all right? All right, so let's look at example one. So we're gonna look at a bunch of these that have fractions. And what do we know about a fraction? The one thing we do know about a fraction is that I cannot ever have zero on the bottom. Because if I have 0 on the bottom, that means that my function is undefined. Well, that's just not going to work. You can't have undefined functions. All right, so we have to figure out 
what's going to make the bottom of my function zero. And if we can do that, then we can figure out what our what our domain is going to be. All right. So let's look at let's look at strictly the bottom of this, strictly the bottom of this function. Okay. I know the top is x squared. That's a parabola. That's from negative infinity to infinity. But this bottom is going to create some restrictions. The bottom. We need to figure out what is going to make the bottom equal to zero, because then we can figure out what we can't be using. All right, so we're going to set the bottom equal to zero, and we're just going to solve it. So I'm going to add four, add four. So x squared equals zero plus four is four, and then I'm going to take the square root. Square root. So square root of four is positive two and negative two. So this graph, this graph right here, if I plug in two. Okay, what's 2 squared minus 4? Well, that's 4 minus 4. That will give me 0. If I have x squared over 0, that's undefined. That doesn't work. If I plug in negative 2, what's well, negative 2 squared minus 4? Well, that's also 4 minus 4. That's also 0. So that will also make my bottom undefined. So once again, that doesn't work. All right? So we need to figure out what, it, what the domain is of this. All right? So... I'm going to get rid of all this, and we're going to do our interval notation. All right, so basically we figured out that this cannot equal positive 2 and negative 2. All right, so, so the graph should go from negative infinity to negative 2. Okay, I'm going to close my parentheses because it cannot equal negative 2. And then it should, okay, so let's see here. So here's negative infinity and negative 2. So negative infinity. And then notice that this line down here on this graph, this is my negative 2 line. It never touches that. because That's called a vertical asymptote. It never touches there. So negative 2 isn't included in my graph. Then I notice I have this, this, this parabola on the bottom. That's from negative 2 to positive 2. And then I have another vertical asymptote at the other spot that makes my graph equal to undefined, and that's at positive 2. So here's negative 2, here's positive 2. So where does my graph go from here? It goes from 2 to all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so these are pretty challenging, but that's how you do interval notation. Okay, so you can kind of look at the graph and see what it, what it should look like. All right, so let's look at example 2. The more we do with these, the easier they get. All right, so this one's a little bit easier. Here's another square root one. What do we know about square roots? Okay, what do we know about square roots? Square roots cannot be negative. Okay, so what we have to figure out is what would, what numbers create this to not be negative. So we want to do t minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because it can be equal to 0, because the square root of 0 is 0, but it has to be bigger than 0 because it can't be negative. So I'm going to solve this just like an equation. I'm going to add 5. So t has to be greater than or equal to 0 plus 5, or 5. And think about this. Let's say I plug in 4. What's 4 take away 5? Well, that would be the square root of negative 1. Can't do that. The first number I can do that will work would be 5. 5 take away 5 is 0. Square root of 0 works. Okay, so the smallest number I can do is 5. So this graph, this domain, would be everything bigger than 5. So I'm going to put includes 5 all the way to positive infinity. Because any number bigger than 5 works. If I plug in 100, 100 take away 5 is 95. You can take the square root of 95. If I plug in a million minus 5, I get 995,000. That still works. Okay. So let's look at the graph here. If you can look at the graph, the graph starts here. And it goes on forever in the positive infinity direction. So therefore, it includes 5 and goes to infinity. Okay. All right, let's look at the next example. All right, this one's another, another uh, fraction. So remember, the fraction, it cannot be equal to 0 on the bottom. Okay. So we need to figure out what would make that bottom equal to 0. All right. And we also have to think that it can't be it can't be less than zero or equal because then that this is also a square root. So x squared minus nine has to be greater than zero. It can't be equal to zero, and it has to be greater than because it's a square root. So now we're going to solve this one. 
x squared is greater than 9. Let's take the square root, square root. So x is greater than positive 3 and negative 3. All right. So how are we going to do this one? So let's look at this. Let's look at this graph. So notice we have these vertical asymptotes here at, at negative 3. The graph doesn't touch. And at positive 3, it doesn't touch. All right. So the graph starts over here on the left. That's a negative infinity. Okay, that always has a parenthesis, and it goes to negative 3. And then we use this union to connect these two, and it starts once again at positive 3, and it goes to infinity. Okay, so we're going to finish that off right there. All right, so. Daddy, look at All right, um, so that is example number 3. Let's finish example number 4 here. All right, so once again, we have another fraction. So the bottom cannot equal zero. Okay, so we have to figure out what makes this bottom equal to zero. So I'm going to set it equal to zero. Okay, so x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero. So now this one we're challenging. Factor this one is actually a pretty easy one factor. So let's look back. The two, there isn't a number in front of the x squared. We can do this. What two numbers multiply to be 12 and add to 7? Multiply to be 12. We had the seven. You can see that that's four and three. All right, so we're going to switch this and this three. All right, so our graph is located everywhere except for at negative four and negative three. So how do I write that? So negative infinity to negative four, since that's the smaller of the two. Open parenthesis cannot equal negative four. Union, so it can be between negative four and three. Okay. Okay, union, so I need to slide this over for a second. And then how do we finish this off here? So we finish this off, so then it, can, it can't be negative 3 again, but it's everywhere bigger than negative 3. So negative 3 to positive. So that's kind of a long one. And you can graph this one on your calculator. I don't think I have the graph here for this one, but you can graph this on the calculator and see that that's everywhere. There <coughs> are vertical asymptotes at negative 4, negative 3, because that would make this equation equal to zero. Okay. So we're going to save the last one for um, class. We might do a couple others, but uh, keep this one blank or try it on your own and see, and see if you can come back and get the answer right. But uh, I know this is a little tricky, um, so that's why I saved this for its very own video. But we'll do more of these in class, and I'll see you tomorrow.